guys, Sean C. Phillips here. Welcome to my June 29th DVD update. I want to talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last two weeks or so. Now, the next month with me is going to be called The Broken Finger in a Cast. And this is, you know, this is hard here and this is wrapped. Well, I ended up getting out of my car quick, you know, when you par I park on this bit of an incline, so the door always kind of falls back, so I got out quickly, ended up jamming my hand in the steering wheel and didn't think it was broken, but then it was bothering me. I had an x-ray, turned out it was broken, so I've got to deal with this for the next, you know, month, and i going to have this at Comic-Con and everything, so it's like, I haven't, you know, this is the only second broken bone I've ever had, so as I always say, though, if you like these DVD updates, and, you know, and Blu-ray updates, definitely give this video a thumbs up, you know, if you feel bad about this cast, thumbs up, I guess, and, you know, as always, too, leave me comments below on what you think of the titles I've talked about in this update. But, like I said, I'm pretty much going to be doing everything with, like, this one hand, and, you know. And the first one I got from Fox is Stoker. And this is from the director of the original um, Old Boy, which I'm really, I, I have not seen that one. Uh, I know the Spike Lee remake is coming out this fall. Definitely I'm going to have to see the original. Heard a lot of really good things about it. Now, this movie is extremely hard to explain. And I'm going to try my best to, like, say as much as I can about it. But it's about this girl and her mother and, uh, you know... Uh, played by Nicole Kidman, and the daughter is played by Maya Wachowski, who is from uh, The Kids Are Alright, and uh, the Alice in Wonderland, you know, movie, the Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. Now, the movie's basically about, you know, her father, at the beginning of the movie, has died in a car accident, and there's very suspicious things about it, and it just seems very strange the father died far away from where he should have been. There's just a whole lot of kind of stuff going on. And when that happens, um, at the funeral, her uncle kind of shows up out of the blue. And, you know, Nicole Kidman ends up, you know, kind of seeing the guy and letting him stay in the house. And there's something very strange about him. And why is, you know, her husband just died and she's having, you know, the husband, her brother-in-law kind of allowing him to stay at this house. And it just kind of seems like there's something weird going on. He seems like there's something peculiar about him. There's also something really weird about the daughter as well. It's one of those kind of movies where it's like you don't exactly, you know, you kind of wonder what's going on with them. And there's just all kinds of meanings behind everything. But like I said, it's one of these movies where you can't really say too much about it because it's just all this kind of weird stuff. And, like, the kids at the school are kind of talking, like, what is, you know, uh, the co Kimmin doing with her brother-in-law? Why is he at the house? And, you know, uh, family members are coming by and saying, you know, they need to talk to her about him. And, you know, when that, when that happens, people start disappearing. And, you know you can say that he's up to something and there's something very bad going on. I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was has amazing cinematography. That's one of my favorite things about this, is some of these shots. And it has a real... Like, some of the cinematography remind me of, like, you know, Asian films and those kind of... Kind of like, the, just the shots and everything about it, which is what I really liked because, you know, the director, you know, as I said, had done Old Boy and pretty much I think this is his first American film he ever did and I really, really liked it and definitely think this is one worth checking out a very creepy weird one but like I said you can't say too much about it without you know ruining details and stuff but I thought it was very effective and you know just just really really thought it was well done and the next one from Image is one that I was really interested in seeing. It's got a whole lot of cameos in it. It stars Eddie K. Thomas, you know, who was from American Pie and uh, Freddy Got Fingered and a whole bunch of stuff. Always liked the guy. And also has Donald Faison, you know, best known from Scrubs and that new show. Um, that new, new Hidden Camera show. I can't remember what the name of it one. Uh, Jamie Presley's in it. Uh, Florence Hendrickson is in it. Uh, Jackie from the Howard Stern Show. You know, I'd always heard that he was in movies, but I don't think I had ever seen any of them. Just a bunch of people pop up in this thing. It's about these three friends who are kind of always, like, doing scheming, and, and they kind of come up, you know, they're always trying to find ways of, you know, getting money and things like that. They come up with this plan of robbing casino chips from this factory, and it's, you know, they're basically casino chips from the mob that are all counterfeit. You know, it's them having the whole plan of doing it, and when they're there, Eddie K. Thomas' character is kind of the lookout guy, ends up becoming, you know, getting kidnapped by them, 
And, you know, basically, they're like, well, you're not going to get him back unless you do something for us. And they kind of have to do something for the mob. But yet they ended up taking um, someone hostage while they were there. And the guy they took hostage, you know, has been in a bunch of movies. And that was some of the funniest stuff was with, with him and the dialogue when they have him kidnapped. It was, you know, one of those kind of movies, though, about, you know, two people having people kidnapped and kind of all the problems that are going along. And if you like, like, I really like Vegas and, the, you know, been there a couple different times. They film in a lot of different places in Vegas. I don't know. I thought this was a really fun one. Um, you know, I really like Eddie K. Thomas, and he has a fun part in this. And like I said, too, it was cool seeing Florence Hendrickson in it, and, you know, from the Brady Bunch, and she kind of plays kind of a crazy, kind of like, kind of a part you wouldn't expect her to, to be doing. And, you know, Jackie was funny, and I don't know, I, I thought this was a fun movie with a lot of cameos in it. A lot of people popping up in this, you wouldn't think. Just a real fun kind of, kind of remind me a little bit like of a 90s movie. The next one is one from Shout Factory that I had not heard much about. When I was watching, I kind of felt like I might have seen like some of it years and years ago on TV, but I couldn't be sure. And it's called Cohen and Tate with um, uh, Roy Scheider and Adam Baldwin, you know, who's not related to any of the Baldwins. Uh, you know, I looked it up to check. And the movie's basically about these two kind of contract killer kind of I guess you'd say hitmen, and they kind of like, um, they normally end up w working alone, and Roy Scheider is so, so good in this. I have been a fan of Roy Scheider forever. Um, you know, had always loved his movies, and I always thought he was very underrated, and this one was really, really good in this. It's about this kid who um, ended up kind of witnessing uh, someone getting killed, and the mob, you know, wants, you know, wants to know, you know, information about it, so they, you know, the kid ends up being put into witness protection with his family, and it opens with, uh, Roy Scheider and Adam, uh, Baldwin's character coming to get the kid, they end up killing his family, and it's one of those real, like, 80s, uh, real violent, like, kind of Terminator kind of vibe movie, it's from the writer of, um, you know, The Hitcher, and Near Dark, and it really has a kind of vibe of, like, The Hitcher, especially that kind of violence and that kind of vibe to it. Really, really w was impressed with this one. There's some crazy sequences, too, in this, with when they have the kid in the car with, like, these, like, driving stuff that you would never, I don't, I have, I have not seen them do kind of things like this practically in a long time. Like, really pretty dangerous, crazy stuff in this one. Uh, but basically, though, it's them with the kid, and Adam Baldwin's character is pretty nuts and really doesn't like the idea of the whole thing and just wants to kill the kid and is kind of nervous about the whole thing. And Roy Schotter is kind of yelling at him the whole time. There's kind of these two that are not getting along, don't want to work together, always worked on their own. And the kid back there who's kind of chiming in smart remarks and things like that and getting him angry. And it's one of those kind of road movies about them trying to get him to the mob and having to drive like 400 miles or so and all the kind of problems that are going along the way. And I don't know, I just really was impressed by this one. And it has an auto commentary on here with the director and some interviews and deleted scenes. But really thought this one looks great on Blu-ray. Would definitely recommend checking this one out. Really, really love this. I, I, it's one of those ones that's kind of too bad that more people don't know about it. The next one from Shout Factory as well is the Sci-Fi Movie Marathon. And Shout Factory's put out a couple of different ones, and they have a new one of these coming out in August as well, which is a horror one. Which I'm actually looking forward to as well, because it has outing on it, which I always like the cover to that one. Don't know if I've ever seen it. Uh, I love that they put these kind of sets out. You know, a lot of these are Empire Pictures. I think one of these is a Canon movie. Um, it's got Arena, Eliminators, America 300... Ameri mean America 3000, The Time Guardian. The one in here I really, really loved was Arena. And it's this crazy... Um, they've, they've kind of copied the idea a lot in some other movies in the last couple of years. So it came out in 1989. It's kind of like Battle Bots and those kind of like... I don't know, it, was, it, it takes place in another planet, and it's basically these aliens that fight each other, and people, like, kind of bet on it, and it's got some of these crazy effects, and it, when they cut to, like, the stadiums and stuff, it looks almost like it's, like, like kind of weird clay models and stuff, and some of the aliens in it are kind of amazing, like, I, 
they one thing I thought was kind of weird though was like some of the greatest aliens they, they didn't they kind of showed the best ones first and at the end the guy they show who's like the last alien they fight is like he's not as cool as the other ones it's kind of like they should have had him be one of the early on ones but it's like this guy that ends up you know causing getting the one alien hurt is this human who's living on this planet and ends up having to fight the, like, he's one of the, I think only, like, the second or third people to ever fight the aliens in this thing. It's kind of him and all the things that are going on. I just thought this was a really fun one. Really crazy costumes and some of, like, the weirdest looking, like, background aliens and stuff. Like, kind of like a mishmash of styles and weird stuff in it. America 3000 is one, though, when women take over and it's, like, men being taken, you know, prisoners and um, Eliminators was like a part man machine one. These are just really, really fun, you know, cheesy B sci-fi movies. Really love this kind of stuff. The next one from uh, Magnolia is Into the White and had not heard too much about this one. Was really interested in seeing this too because it has Rupert Grint, you know, from the Harry Potter films. Really liked Rupert Grint, like really liked him in Driving Lessons. He did a really good job in this. I thought everybody did a good job in this. And on the um, one of the features on here, the critic was talking about how it kind of felt like a stage play. And it really does have that kind of vibe to it. You know, really, really well acted. It's about um, in Norway. There's kind of this war going on, and it's the Germans and the British soldiers that are kind of trying to get... I don't know all the full details of it. I couldn't... I uh, wasn't sure about this. I don't know a whole ton about history, but they're trying to take over Norway. But it ends up these two planes end up shooting each other down in the middle of this, you know, the in the middle of a snowstorm. It's freezing out, and the... Um, the Germans end up trying to find shelter and end up finding this cabin out in the middle of nowhere. And they're out there, and, you know, they kind of think the other plane, everyone's dead. So they end up going to this place, you know, getting in there, and then they hear the voice at the distance, the voices of British soldiers, and they all end up, and they end up basically letting them come in there with them. They end up kind of taking them prisoner. And the main guy who's, like, in charge of them, isn't. you can kind of tell that he's not so sure about, you know, what he's having to do, and it's one of those movies, though, about, like, people that kind of really should not be getting along, because it's during wartime, and the, you know, the Germans and British soldiers are, you know, fighting each other and killing each other and things like that as well, and it's kind of like them having to work together to survive in this situation, you know, and trying to find food and kind of things like this. I just thought this was an extremely well-acted movie, and really, really loved it, and the fact, too, that it was a true story. I don't know. I just really thought this was one I would definitely recommend checking out. And just, just a really well acted thing. And, you know, even though it's a war film, you know, I don't love, love too many war movies, but it doesn't really, that's not the major thing. And it is mainly just about people that would not normally, you know, be happy. people that, you know, shouldn't really be, be with each other in situations because of what's going on, be kind of working with each other and kind of trying to find some ways to survive out there. And I always love those kind of, you know, survival out in the snow kind of movies and there's some amazing shots out in the snow and I, I think it kind of looked like they actually were out there for a lot of it you know, dealing with it, and you could see, too, how, like, freezing it must have been, because everyone's faces were so blown out red, I don't know, I just really like that, the next one is a documentary from the people who did Food, Inc., and this is from Magnolia as well, and it's A Place at the Table, and this one is presented by Jeff Bridges, and I thought this was an interesting one, it's basically about, um, the kind of the shortage, it's like, not about the shortage of food, but about how many people in America don't have, you know, enough food, and kind of, like, following around different people, and it kind of was interesting stuff in there that I never would have thought about, like, people who live in, like, farm communities, I mean, I think it was kind of people, like, kind of farm areas, but I guess there wasn't a whole lot of farm going on, but people who were out, like, in the middle of, you know, very far from, like, Walmarts and places like that, and if they have, like, little mom-and-pop markets and things like that, how they don't have access to fruits and it's all canned things, just kind of stuff you wouldn't think of. And it's kind of about, like, you know, the school situation with, you know, about unhealthier food and about trying to have increased, you know, money for the food system and all that kind of stuff about trying to get people to eat right, but, you know, at the same time, it's very difficult to do that with the amount of money 
and a lot of the kids, you know, the school lunch is pretty much the only thing they want, you know, get to eat. It's very, very sad, some stuff going on in this. I thought it was a very well done thing that really, you know, it's one of the things, too, that's kind of trying to prove a point of what's going on and things like this. Jamie Oliver, too, has a lot to say. He wasn't involved in this one, but he has his own kind of thing going on, too, about a very similar stuff going on and things like that as well. I thought, though, for what this was, very well done. You know, definitely gets part the point across about what's going on and trying to, you know, get enough money and how also about people too, you know, with food stamps and the kind of thing too. If you do get a better job, you can end up losing the food stamps and then you don't end up having enough money and things like that. I don't know though. Like I said though, it was very well done and definitely to me I thought it was pretty sad too. Just you know the kind of situations and things like that that people have to go through. This one from Sony is one. I really like this one, Dead Man Down. It's from the director of the original Girl the Dragon Tattoo series. It stars Colin Farrell and Naomi Reprace and Terrence Howard. Naomi Reprace was in the original Girl the Dragon Tattoo series as Elizabeth. Also, she was in one movie recently that I, you know, she was in Prometheus, but also in one that I really liked. I hard movie I feel like not too many people saw called Monitor. This is an extremely creepy one. Very effective effective one too and this movie is basically now one thing i will say too is the trailer for this movie do not tell you too much about the movie and kind of make you think it could be one thing going on you know it's like doesn't tell you too much about it which uh, you know i liked it's nice when you see a movie too in the trailers don't give away all the stuff so you kind of have some surprise with it so i'm not going to say everything about it but it's basically about you know revenge and people with revenge in the mind and you know colin farrell's character is kind of a hitman who works for terrence howard's character and you know something has happened to his family and because of that is why he is working with terrence howard's character and has a very elaborate plan of revenge and why he's doing what he's doing and why he's working with Terrence Howard. And, you know, Naomi replaces his character. You see her kind of staring at him because they live across from each other in these high-rise apartments buildings. And you see her looking at him and you kind of think that she likes him. And, you know, she ends up talking to him and, you know, she basically had seen him kill somebody. And she has, you know, she had a, recently had a car accident and, you know, the side of her face was burned and, you know, and she ends up basically trying to blackmail him with, you know, with what she saw with getting her, you know, getting him to do something for her. And it's one of those kind of things about, like I said, two people with the, you know, who both are, you know, broken about things that have happened in their lives and her going about, you know, both want to get revenge on somebody. And I don't know, I just thought this was a very effective one. Like I said, yeah, I don't want to say too much about it because, like I said, the trailers do not say too much. I don't want to ruin anything about it because I really thought this was a really effective one. Really well shot, too. Um, it's got a bunch of features on here, stage in the action and, like, some... Uh, you know, things in the cinematography and some featurettes, but would highly recommend checking this one out. The next one is a, you know, from, um, you know, Warner Brothers is Regular Show. This is a really fun show. It's the Blu-ray of season one and two, and I heard, I've never really seen this why it was on, so I was watching through a whole bunch of these. Really thought this was a fun show. It kind of reminds me of, like, the liquid television kind of shows that Nick, that um, MTV used to have in the early 90s. Kind of like the grunt mixed with like things like Rocco, kind of things like Spongebob. And I think it's for kids, but it's got a whole lot of undertones and things like that that adults are going to find very funny. It's about this... Um, squirrel and it's kind of like a chicken or a bird who live together and they end up working on the I think it's like a golf course and all these kind of crazy characters around them the one's like a gumball machine the one has like this huge head and has this like kind of crazy voice like I, I don't know I thought the voice work in this one is really pretty funny I think I, I don't know it's got a whole bunch of features on here too commentaries on here on all the episodes stuff from Comic Con you know it was a who, I don't know if I was there the year that comic yeah, 2010. So I don't think I was there that year. 
um, a whole bunch of different stuff on here. But this is a really fun thing. The one episode on here, there was a couple of different ones I was checking out. One I really liked was then with this keyboard, like this magical keyboard, and everything they, you know, play into it, everything they say, they end up basically, like, being able to make the things happen. One of them on here with them trying to get a birthday cake, and they don't have any money, and all the kind of things they're doing to try and get it. I don't know, this is a really fun show. It looks really, really good on Blu-ray. You know, really like this one a lot. It's, it's, it's kind of my kind of humor, that kind of, you know, weird, like I said, that kind of liquid television. And, like, really well animated. I think it's Flash mixed with, like, hand-drawn looking backgrounds, which I really like that style. And, really, like I said, really looks good on Blu-ray. The next one from Anchor Bay is Six Souls. And I don't think this one went to theaters. And it's a Julianne Moore movie. And, you know, Julianne Moore, yeah. And it's about... Uh, Julianne Moore kind of does investigations about, you know, people who, um, you know for the courts about like people who have been possessed and kind of like debunking that kind of stuff. And, um, she ends up getting, her father ends up putting her with this patient who kind of is like multiple personality. And she's kind of trying to figure out what's going on with this person and getting to the bottom of it. And when he kind of changes personality, it's like they call him on the phone and then he's like, I want to talk to what, I don't, like Brian or something. And then he's like doing all this crazy stuff and shaking around. And it's kind of like something weird going on about it. And it doesn't sort of, it seems kind of weird to her. It's kind of one of the first times when she's getting kind of perplexed by what's going on with it. And it's also like everything's something like weird things are happening to everybody around the guy that talks to him. Like they start getting these like rashes on their neck and start getting sick. And it's a bit, pretty much about like, you know, since it's about, you know, six souls and it's about like, is there something going on with this guy and like taking people's souls, you know, something weird. People are dying around him. Just a really pretty creepy one. I thought it was a tiny bit long, but I, I thought it was a pretty effectively creepy one. You know, Julianne Moore is always good in all the stuff she's done. I thought this was definitely one I would check out. Like a, um, just a really creepy one about her trying to investigate and getting to the bottom of what this thing is going on with this guy and, you know, what, why all the things are happening and how this guy, too, can basically become, you know, quadriplegic, you know, when this happens, when he gets taken over, he can't move, and, you know, he can kind of take over the whole presence of these people that, you know, that are, when he's, like, doing the multiple personalities and her trying to figure out all the meaning of it. The next one I got from Anchor Bay as well is Rectify. Really great artwork on this one about him peeking out of the jail cell. Looks really really cool. And this is a Sundance show, and it's about this guy who ended up, you know, I think it was 19, yeah, 19 years, and he was, you know, accused of killing this woman, and put away in jail, and, you know, the, some of the family members always didn't believe that he did it, and after 19 years, new evidence has come about, and has got him released, you know, from prison, but this is somebody who, you know, has only been in the, you know, has been on death row for all these years has had situations where he's almost been, you know, put to death a number of times, and for one switch reason or another, he never was put to death, and luckily enough that he wasn't, and now he's been released, but there's also some, you know, stuff going along with the case where it's not, he's not proven innocent, you know, the evidence has changed, and because of that, he was released, it's kind of like the, um, this, this case with the, um, Paradise Lost, with the kids who were accused of murder and that, who ended up being released, but yet they can't say they're innocent, even though I'm pretty, I, I really think they are, but they can't say they are for one reason or another, and because of the terms of the release, but it's kind of the same situation with the with the guy in this who ends up being released, but yet they're still going, going to be basically reopening the case because now they don't know who it was, and he's still going to be considered a suspect even though you don't you know we don't know for sure though. But like the evidence though proves that he didn't do it, and it's kind of the people in the town too when he's like released don't like the idea of it, and you know there's a sheriff there who's trying to 
basically, you know, get the case looked at again and get him taken back and all the kind of situations that he's dealing with and him back with his family and trying to adjust to being out of jail, who's someone who's been in death row for all this time and never really seen sunlight and trying to deal with all that kind of stuff, never had a schedule because, like, he has no ability to deal with time because in prison he did everything he could to try and make it feel like he wasn't there for all the time that he was. and So he really doesn't know how to deal with anything thing, and it's him trying to adjust to life out of prison. Just thought this was a really effective show, really well acted, really well done, really would highly recommend checking this out, really like this one. The next one I got from Kino is Black Sabbath, the Mario Bava film. It's a really fun anthology film, some very creepy stuff in it too, like the last story, like this, the face on the one woman, like I think it was kind of like, a, I don't know what they used to make it, because it was like there's this frozen face, extremely creepy, but it's three different stories hosted by Boris Karloff, but Boris Karloff hosts the first story, but then you don't really see him pop up again as a host. He's in the second segment, though, but the first one is kind of about a woman who's getting a call on the phone, and someone's saying that they're going to kill her, and it's kind of like the early, early things of those kind of, like, when a stranger calls and those kind of situations, and, you know, Black Christmas about getting phone calls and things like that. That was was actually my favorite story in this, you know, just for the, the plot of it. It doesn't exactly fit, though, as much with the other two stories, which are more like period pieces. The second one is about people coming back from the dead, and it's um, Boris Karloff coming back, and there's some creepy visuals in that one with, like, the people coming back, and, um, I don't know, I thought that, 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 this movie, too, to me, the coolest stuff in it was the visuals, some really crazy visual stuff, especially the last story about someone who has died, and this ring, and the woman steals the ring, and starts hearing, like, this fly, and seeing all this crazy stuff. This movie, you can see how it's influenced a lot of, like, modern-day horrors and films and things like that. But this is a very creepy one, some really creepy stuff in it. Um, that was some of my favorite stuff, like I said, like the creepy visuals and things like that in that. So anyway, though, that was all for this DVD Blu-ray update. One, a little bit of a smaller one than some of the other ones. But anyway, though, guys, definitely give this video a thumbs up if you've been enjoying the updates and yes like I said you know I don't want to make sure to let you guys know about the broken finger and you know how it happened because I'm sure a lot of you guys were wondering and I've seen a lot of posts too about it so anyway though guys thanks a lot for watching for subscribing and I'll see you guys later